For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Sanel Lameni. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me to discuss how the development in NUMSA will affect our democracy. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Why do you devote so much time in NUMSA and its proposed United Front when you appear to have doubts about it being serious about the proposal? I don't really have doubts. I just think that there needs to be clarification. And um, since I wrote my column last week, the um, uh, Deputy General Secretary, Carl Clutie, and I have been dialoguing uh, on Facebook. Oh. And I've, I've got some clarification from that. And today there's a very interesting article by Dinga, uh, well, about, uh, with interview with Dinga Sikwebu, who is, I think he's in charge of promoting United Front. So what, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying they're not serious. What I'm saying is, what is the relationship of the United Front to the left party initiative which NUMSA is promoting? And in the um, article I wrote last week, I did say that it is important that they have consulted with communities and that mm. they've started to initiate United Front structures. And I think that today's interview with Sequebu makes more clear uh, the sense that they, the, there's this element of humility that one needs. If you want to set up a united front, uh, it's not like setting up a, a tent, you know. <laughs> um, you're, you are actually facilitating a process whereby other people will take charge yes. of its future. So when you initiate something, it's not for you to determine what it will ultimately become. And I think that he does make it more clear that a number of types of organizations will be involved and they will uh, have to decide what its scope is and so forth. For me, it's very important that one um, does, doesn't have some agenda in your mind for United Front because people who have got grievances uh, that you don't know of mm. till you listen to them. Yes. And it must be a process of learning from what these people say and uh, listening to them. But it's really their process. However, NUMSA may continue to play a role uh, in, in the United Front if, for example, people raise separate questions and they don't see that it's tied to a broader question which NUMSA may understand. And that's how the Freedom Charter works, for example, that mm -hmm. people raise a whole lot of different demands. And then the Freedom Charter links that to a broader principle, like the people shall govern. And now NUMSA, or the United Front itself, as it develops its program, will have to move from specific grievances towards a general program. Now, assuming that the United Front is to be initiated by NOMSA or with NOMSA or separately by some other organizations, what do you see as the key question relating to how it is to be established? Um, you see, if one um, has a united front, it must have certain components. Mm. Now, how do those components arrive? If people have a grievance that they share, uh, how do you help them to get together? Um, how do you help them with transport? I'm not suggesting NUMSA must do all this. Mm. NGOs may help them. If they don't have got any money and no one helps them to have transport, to have a meeting place, to have food, 
all these things, it may well be that a very important community that has important issues that should be part of the United Front may never get to see it. Okay. Now, at the same time, uh, when, and when you do get people together, how do they run their meetings? Running a meeting is a skill. Now, okay. this is where <coughs> NGOs, some NGOs know how to train people, how to, how to chair a meeting, how to be a treasurer, how to fundraise, all these sorts of things. But the unions are very good on this. And it may be that on running meetings, they can help. So it seems to me that on the one hand, you must be hands off in the sense that once people get together and start developing an organization, it should be left to them autonomously to decide what is important to them mm -hmm. and have these different uh, semi-autonomous uh, organizations gradually coming together with a common purpose. So that on the one hand, you may have traders, you may have people who want land, you may have people who are homeless, who are being evicted, you may have workers, you may have unemployed, mm. you may have uh, scholars, etc., etc. You may have all these people operating separately, but uh, somehow they've got to identify both what are their specific grievances, but also how unity will benefit them. Because coming together makes you stronger. But then when you come together, you have to have a common program. So you've got to have both a specific program and a common program. The specific program must not be so all-consuming that it will not allow unity, but the unification process must not be so broad that it rubs out what is specific. So. What that means really is that there must be a lot of learning and teaching, teaching and learning. In other words, when someone raises something, you, if you are part of the process of developing a united front, you are quite, uh, it's quite important to try to assist the front to come together. But the way you do it uh, has to be sensitive. Mm. You can't come with uh, broad conceptions that come from uh, overseas <laughs> scholars and all of those things. People must see for themselves that there's a need for unity and you must not intrude, but at the same time you must help. So it's a very delicate matter of listening. It's not something that intellectuals have the answer for because even if intellectuals have read about United Fronts, they don't necessarily fit the particular conditions and problems that people have. And even if you have a good solution, you don't go there and give your solution. You have to have people themselves seek for assistance. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Klima Media's policy about the development in Nyumsa. Thanks, Professor. Thank you.